Hello and welcome to ITNs. Today we'll touch base on virtualization, monolithic architecture versus microservice architecture, and then we'll look at how we're going to install VirtualBox. Yep. Welcome back to ITNs. So in the early video, we saw what is virtualization. We talked about a bit on microservice and monolithic uh, architectures. So today, let's touch base again on those components before we start with our today's agenda, right? So for type one, you have a hardware layer, you have a hypervisor layer, you have a guest virtual machine layer, okay? And for type two, you have a hardware layer, you have a host operating system layer, and on top of it, you have a hypervisor layer, and then your virtual machine layer, okay? So what happens is, with the type one, when you're installing a virtual machine, right? So this actually is sitting directly on the hypervisor layer, right? And the hypervisor is directly communicating with the hardware. Now you would have tons of CPU, gigs of RAM, terabytes of hard disk, gigabits of network, right? All this hypervisor is managing all this and providing it to virtual machine based on the settings that we configure on that virtual machine, right? But in, in this type two scenario, you have like hardware layer, you have host operating system, hypervisor, virtual machine, right? So even here you have the same hardware, CPU, RAM, hard disk, network, right? What happens is when, when a virtual machine is configured with CPU, RAM, hardware, and network, it has to go through hypervisor layer. Hypervisor interacts with the operating system layer and then operating system interacts with, with the hardware layer. So as you can see, there's an additional layer of host operating system sitting be uh, between the hypervisor and the hardware layer. And that causes the lag in communication between the guest virtual machine and the hardware, right? In this scenario, it was direct. So when you have a hardware, you install um, Windows uh, 2019 hypervisor uh, server, or uh, Linux um, servers, or any of the flavors of Linux servers that support hypervisor, install that. Uh, it actually is connecting, they're communicating directly to the hardware layer, and VM machines are communicating to the hypervisor layer. Right? So this one is also called as bare metal architecture. Correct. Right? Now type two. So what happens is you have got the hardware, you have installed any of the operating system, be it Windows 10 or Windows 2019 or any Linux uh, operating system. Then on top of it, you install a hypervisor software, right? Uh, and then your guest virtual machines are configured, correct? So this is also called as hosted architecture. So I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter uh, here or here. So what operating system you're depend, uh, you're installing. But if your BIOS is con configured to support virtualization, it doesn't matter, okay? The only difference is, like when you're installing out in type two, hypervisor layer will be installed on top of your host operating system, okay? Now, let me give you an examples of type one and type two hypervisor. So type one are VMware uh, ESXi and Microsoft Hyper-V. For type two, you can use uh, VirtualBox or VMware Workstation, okay? So uh, I would actually prefer using uh, type one hypervisor when you are running uh, virtualization on a on production environment or on a mission critical environment. Whereas type two, you can use it when you're running on a lab environment, right? 
because you know that because of this layer yeah there will be a lag correct so it's not advisable to run type 2 on your uh, on your uh, production environment type 2 is only for your lab environment okay let's move to the next slide where we'll talk about the differences between uh, monolithic and microservice architecture we have uh, the monolithic architecture and this is the comparison we are doing for between monolithic architecture and microservice architecture now consider this example wherein you have all the applications all the modules in a single code right and you have a database so it's it's an application container right so, oh, sorry all the modules of the applications are bundled in, in a single code okay so in case if you want to do any changes in any of the module it would require changing in all the modules right because they are connected to each other and that could cause a long downtime right in case if it is not working uh, in the development environment uh, it will take longer time to deploy the entire uh, application in the production environment whereas in the microservice architecture all the various modules are separate i mean in they, they're communicating with each other via an http protocol or via an api so the advantage here is all the different modules are a bit isolated they are they are sitting isolated they can use their own set of codes own sort of application but they will still communicate with each other right uh, that's the advantage so in this scenario if you want to make any changes on that module it becomes very easy you make a change on this module right uh, you can you can make the change of this module this will not impact on this one it will not impact here or here or anywhere yeah so that's the advantage you change make the change whatever change is required and again push it back to the production environment this change is going to be very small so it's not going to cause any long downtime so that is the advantage of microservice and uh, monolithic architecture uh, the example which I gave in the earlier session was about the e-commerce wherein we might have a product catalog um, and the, the uh, we can have a, like a billing gateway uh, module or a cart module or I mean different sorts of module though they are isolated but they are still communicating with each other and they are bundled together to serve, serve a purpose. So that was the purpose of uh, this architecture right. Uh, now let's touch base on our main thing today that is about VirtualBox. Okay, now let's proceed with our installation of VirtualBox, right? So VirtualBox is our type 2 uh, virtualization architecture. So let's uh, go to the site to download VirtualBox. VirtualBox download. Okay, and this is the place from where you can actually go ahead and download your virtual box. So for Windows, as I have a Windows operating system, I'll click on this link. But if you have uh, the other operating systems, you can choose any of the links as per your operating system. So for Windows, I'll click on this, Windows hosts, and then I'll click on save. Okay, so for benefit of time, I've actually downloaded uh, it here uh, this is the file okay and uh, let's go ahead and uh, download one more pack from this side that is extension pack so that is required to configure the USBs and other things so that it can communicate directly with the virtual machine and the physical hard disk uh, while well, actually it's it's more of a GUI enhancements yeah um, okay, so we can actually click on this and get that downloaded. So, yeah, and again, this is where uh, I mean, this also I have downloaded here. That's the one. So, let's go ahead and install it. Okay, so as any uh, application uh, with Windows, it's mostly click next, next, next. I agree, and that's it. All right, now our virtual machine is uh, installed, Oracle VirtualBox is installed. I'll click on finish and that's it now before I proceed further I would need to install the extension pack okay 
so i'll click on reinstall it's giving me an option to reinstall because i've already installed it yeah so anyways we can go ahead and click on reinstall i have to go through the license agreement and i click on i agree click on yes then that's it so we have installed the extension pack successfully i'll click on ok so uh that's it for today uh friends today we actually discussed about the different type 1 and type 2 architecture of uh, virtualization we discussed a bit on monolithic and microservice architectures then we actually discussed about installing oracle virtual box yeah going forward we are going to install uh, Ubuntu based uh, virtual machine, Red Hat virtual machine and Windows virtual machine before we touch base on Docker. Yeah, that's because we want to compare between the two uh, technology uh, that is uh, the virtualization provided by um, type 1 or type 2 architecture and uh, virtualization provided by Docker. Yeah? So uh, that is a, actually an application level of virtualization. So to in order to understand or differentiate between the two uh, we have to go through this process okay okay uh, that's all guys for today uh, thank you all for watching and keep watching keep learning thank you